Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com and EatingThaiFood.com in Bangkok, Thailand. Today is a very special day. I am hanging out with Pai, Hi. who is from Hot Thai Kitchen. She does Thai recipes, some amazing Thai recipes on YouTube. We've got a giant blakapong, which is a barramundi fish, and we are about to cook it up and make a dish called blakapong nung manao which is a steamed barramundi. So I'm gonna turn it over to Pai and she's gonna show, show us all how to cook it. So this dish is such a classic, right? You go to yes. any seafood restaurants in Thailand and guaranteed it will be on the menu. Yes. So, but what's great about it also is that it's so easy. Okay. It's one of the easiest thing to make and it looks impressive and I love impressive things that look easy. Whenever Ying and I go to a seafood yeah. restaurant, it's one of the a one of our have? standard dishes yeah. that we order yeah. a lot. So I've I've included it in a lot of videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's yeah, I think it's a simple but the flavors are just so, so fantastic. One of the main ingredients is garlic. It's got tons and tons of garlic. So Mark is gonna help me chop up a whole bunch of garlic here and just okay. mince it. Okay, is that okay right there? Yeah, that's perfect. Like that. And then we'll just run the knife over it one more time. Okay. And then so while Mark is doing that, I'm gonna get the sauce started. And so one of the key ingredients for this sauce is the broth. So I've got some chicken stock here that I'm going to heat up and you want, the better the stock, the better the flavor, okay? So if you can get yourself a nice homemade chicken stock, that's what you want. So Mark, I'm gonna get yes. you to help me light up the stove oh, yeah. here. Let me do that for you. This is super cool, this it street is, uh... food cart. Whoa. Okay, perfect. All right, so in there is chicken stock and I'm going to add some palm sugar. Now. You don't want the sauce to taste super sweet, but we're gonna be adding a ton of lime juice. So if you don't put any sugar at all, it can be, it can be a little sharp. So I like to round it off a little bit with some palm sugar. So I just wanna bring the broth to a boil and for the sugar to dissolve. And that's it, you wanna take it off heat right away because you don't want to um, reduce the volume of the sauce. Look how much garlic we have, and that's yeah. what we need. So actually, I'm gonna get you to dump that right in, so that, into the, yeah, into the broth so, right here, okay. so that the garlic gets the, the heat of the broth will help infuse the garlic into, into the sauce, and it'll soften the sharpness of the garlic a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is get some chilies chopped okay. up, and this is Mark's favorite thing. Oh, so yes. for this recipe, as many chilies as you like. So okay. how much would you like to add? I think we'll probably just use them all. Yeah, you can use them all, go just for it. Just use all of these here. So you take off the top. Okay. And so you want to get it into first thin slices like Mark is doing. And then you want to run your knife over it again. And then Mark's going to be careful not to rub his eyes in, <laughs> yeah. with his hands afterwards. Yep, and that goes into the, yep, that goes the garlic into here. broth. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, of course, the next thing is fish sauce. Yeah. Cannot have Paneng Manao without fish sauce. So I've got that and of course, would you do the honor of oh. the main ingredient? We've got a ton of lime juice over here. Okay. Go ahead and pour that in. And yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing? Yeah. So that's pretty much almost done. Okay. One more thing is we're gonna chop up some cilantro and add it to this broth. Just finely fine chopped. Like that? Yeah, okay. yeah, just finely chopped. You want things to be relatively fine. So think of this as Mark is making a salsa. Right, a salsa to go over fish. Beautiful, nice knife skills, Mark. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm practicing. Are you the cook in the family? <laughs> um, occasionally. Occasionally. Okay, so that gets dumped into here. Okay. I always like to leave the cilantro last, let the broth cool a little bit so it doesn't wilt the cilantro too yeah. much. But a little bit of heat does help it infuse and the flavors come together. Okay, that's the broth. And now what you wanna do though is taste it. And you want it to be a little stronger on the taste when yes. you're tasting it because yes. it's gonna flavor the whole fish, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna give this a taste first. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty happy with that. Do you okay. wanna give it a taste and let me know yeah. what you think? Oh, yes I do. I like it. So this, you want this to be sour, okay? This is nung manao, manao is lime. So you, this needs to be yeah. Right, garlicky, spicy. Oh, yeah. Your senses should awaken as soon as you eat it. It's kind of like a cross between a sauce and a soup. 
Yes. Because the, it's like a sauce because it flavors the whole fish, but then you can also eat it like a soup. Uh, so it's the best of everything. Mm -hmm. But the sauce is ready. And so I think we're gonna move on now to the fish. My little trick, uh -huh. not everyone does this, is to put a little bit of lemongrass in the belly of the fish because okay. it helps extra aroma. But what we say in Thai is that dap ka, which means it takes away any fishiness yes. or gaminess if you're dealing with red meat. So all these herbs are really good for that. Mark has given me this weapon. Do you wanna do the honor? Sure. And smash the lemongrass. Okay. And, we're and that's gonna just bring out the the full aroma and oils of that lemongrass, right? Absolutely. You can actually see that juice, juice coming out coming of that. All the juice coming out. So now we have to deal with our monster of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so when I do Paka Pong Ning now, it is about half the size. So especially with big fish like this, I like to score it. Okay. And scoring will open up the the, fi the, the flesh, so when you pour the broth over it, it helps the broth go in. It okay. also helps it cook a lot faster. All right. So a smaller fish, you don't have to score. It's not as big of a deal, but with a big fish, you definitely want to. So, yeah. right to the bone, and it also oh, helps so you. Go, you go all the way down. I go all the way down okay. because this is so thick. Okay. So you flip it, okay. and then you do it the same way and because you flipped it, it'll go in the other direction. All right. So that way you don't trick. have, yeah, you don't have like a piece of, of bone that's exposed on both sides and then okay. it'll overcook more quickly. So this helps the fish cook more quickly. And oh, don't forget, this is the only seasoning you're gonna put okay. in. into the belly. Five or six. Yeah. I and mean, only the bottom portion the of bottom the lemongrass goes in. All right. Okay. Steaming time. Okay. So, Mark, talk about what we've got set up here. So we have a gas bottle, which is hidden beneath in the street food cart. And then on top of the gas bottle, there's mm. a, we got a wok. There is some water boiling yep, on the bottom. Just plain and water. And then that's just, it's like a grill used for steaming. Whoop, and yeah. the fish. <laughs> it actually goes across the whole diameter of so, the wok. And this is a large sized wok. I know. Okay. So we'll close it. Okay, put and, the lid on. Yep, put the lid on and cook that until it's done. To seal in the steam, I'm, I might just put a wet towel all around it just to keep everything in. Okay. Um, so we have to improvise a little bit with such a big fish. But for this one, I'm gonna guess about 15 to 20 minutes. The fish has been steaming for about 15 minutes, so we are gonna lift off the lid and See check, it's done. check it out. Ooh. Oh yeah. Wow. That, that can be a Thanksgiving dinner for somebody. Yes. Okay, so the way to check is very easy. You just take a fork and lift the flesh. And if the flesh lifts up from the bone, then it's done. But if it's sticking a little bit, then it's not done. Because when fish cooks, it goes from sort of sticky to flaky. You're going to have to do a little bit of... Um, Cooperation makeshift, here. Makeshift plating here with such a large fish. Yes, so um, hold on. Before we do that, I'm going to prep the platter a little bit with Chinese celery. All right, one, two, three. Oh, this will work. This will work. All right, Yay! perfect. Wow. All right. And so now we just put the sauce on okay. the fish. Just take the herbs first and uh -huh. put it on top so that way it just doesn't go all over the place, right? So. There we go. Oh yeah. You can smell that already, oh, right? Yeah, my, my mouth is actually watering right now. Gee, I'm doing something right. Okay, so now that you've got most of the herbs piled in the middle, you can go ahead and just douse the whole thing. So that is a beautiful fish. Some final um, celery leaves for garnish. We just dished ourselves out some fresh plates of rice and we're about to dig into the fish. Yeah, go for it. Mark, right. which part of the fish is your favorite? The entire fish is my favorite, but yeah. The, uh, the cheek thing. is awesome, the belly is awesome, the every part of the flesh is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Which part would you suggest I begin with? Take the cheeks. A lot of people okay. don't know, especially a big fish like this, the uh -huh. cheeks are the most tender part. And oh, there's yes. only two. So you gotta go in before someone else, you know, gets to it. The recommendation from Pai is to make sure you grab the cheek first. Yep. Don't and then don't say the anything. End. Don't yep. say anything. Just take it and just pretend nothing happened. Nobody will ever know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> go do that right it. now. Go for it. Okay. Yep. And for that first bite, I have to go in for some of that chili and garlic as well. 
And make sure you get lots of sauce in that. Oh right? yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna dip that into broth. that broth as well. I'll take the belly. The okay. belly is nice and fatty and tender. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Mmm. 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 Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, that is awesome. The cheek is so juicy and 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 kind of like silky. Mm-hmm. I'm going in for the that top fleshiness. Would you like to come in here and yeah. come in here and grab some as well? I will. Or I can serve you. Oh well, thank you. Good etiquette when you're oh, eating yes. in Thailand is to serve someone else as well. Oh, wow, yes. that's a big bite. Oh yes. Yeah, and the back is sort of the easiest part, right? I always, if I've got kids around, I always make sure the kids get the back part because there's not a lot of bones, so it's a, a safe spot. This time I'm going in on my, on my rice and yeah, it's a really fresh fish actually Extra as well. Extra garlic. Mm. Mm. Not only is the fish really good, but the whole, yeah, the flavor is fantastic. That is extremely delicious. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much for showing for us help. all how to make it. You can find all the ingredients and then all the steps for making this recipe over on eatingthaifood.com, as well as over on Pai's website, hotthaikitchen.com. And also be sure to check out her videos on YouTube, amazing recipes, and you'll find a lot of great content on her channel. So go check that out. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. And thank you again very much for watching. See you on the next video.